something to tell someone. It's Dragonfly TV. Dragonfly TV. Do you ever wish that you could just go flying through the air? Yeah, crazy. There's not many things you can do in life that are like flying a couple hundred feet through the air. It's just the biggest rush I can get. You know that when you let go of the bar, that there's no turning back. You're in the track, you're going, and I think it's really cool. You just gotta hold on to it. If you like bail out in midair, there would be a really big chance of you like landing on your head. Jump! That's what could happen, folks. <laughs> Back in the day, those old timers jumped in some crazy positions. We never learned those moves, but some of those guys were great. So we wanted to figure out what gets us a longer jump, their way or our way. A clash of the generations. Dude, like relax. <laughs> about ski jumping. There are three essential parts of ski jumping. The first one is the in run. It's where you're going down the jump. It's very important to remember to keep your back flat and your head up so you can see the end of the jump coming at you. What are you doing, Carl? I'm getting my in run. Okay. okay. Step two is the air flight. It's where you're flying through the air. That's where we get the name from. We're currently using the V position with our skis. Called the V style and it's in a V-shaped form. How you hold your skis makes a difference in how the air pushes on you. What we want is the style where the air pushes us up rather than slowing us down. And last, as you may have guessed, is the landing. Carl's in a telmark position. It's kind of like a lunge. Look out! It's like he's got a hollow head. This is so funny. <laughs> I was uh, basically kind of born on skis, you know? Uh, my dad, he went to the uh, 84 Olympics, and I think that was pretty cool, so I kind of look up to him. We asked some dudes at our ski club about old school styles, and we picked two styles to compare to ours. The first one is the Superman with arms out. Next, the Cranker with arms circling around, and the regular V, which we use now. But now, it's time for the test. We're going to find out which jumping position gets us farther down the hill. Dude, what no growth in this? You know what, guys? I think it's too cold to jump. Yeah, I think we should wait till summer. It's just easier to do things when it's warm anyway. Let's get out of here. Don't go away. Find out how we ski jump when it's 80 degrees. kind of person. <laughs> Allison, she's a goofball. She always keeps the team motivated. And even if we lose, she's always happy and she always puts a smile on our face. <laughs> when I first started playing hockey, there weren't many girls playing. Pretty soon, people started telling their friends how fun it was and more girls started playing. Guys think the girls' hockey is wimpy because there's no checking. But since there's no checking, we get better at stick handling and shooting. Than just for boys anymore. Yeah! That's our team at the Girls State Hockey Tournament. 
But it's not just the practice, it's also the right equipment. Like which stick to use. And there are a lot of sticks to choose from. Most sticks are made of wood, but not all wood sticks are the same. Like when you push on some, they bang kind of easy. Others don't. That's called flex. Flex is a springiness in your stick that can give your shot more speed. Each stick has a flex number on it. If you support the stick on each end, about one yard apart, the flex is the amount of weight in pounds it takes to bend the stick three inches. But we want to know how flex affects our shooting power and accuracy. We decided to test wood sticks with three different flex levels. The lower the number, the more flexible the stick. We'll test a 65, a 75, and a 90. Each of us will shoot for speed and accuracy. We'll test accuracy by shooting 10 pucks at a target inside the net. We'll record the number of times we hit the target. <laughs> Allison's going to start the accuracy test. Go! Remember, she has to try hitting the target inside the net using each of the three sticks. How'd I do? You got five on the 65 flex, now on the 75 flex. Allison, looks like your data is really weird. It's got five for the 65 and three for the 75 and five for the 90. It's like opposite end. <laughs> now it's Tess's turn for the accuracy test. Come on, Tess. So for Allison's doing the best. Huh, I want to see what you do it. <laughs> Me too. Hit. You broke it, Christina. Mm -hmm. Hit. No, 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 Christina. Beat Allison. Oh. She beat me bad. Sorry, Allison. I wouldn't be talking if I were you. <laughs> you got seven, Christina. <laughs> I'm beating both of you. Oh, I wonder which stick you'll pick. Mm, Tess, do you need help? <laughs> Christina, very pathetic. <laughs> now let's see what happens with speed. We'll test our slap shot speed by using this radar gun. Oh, and over, Missy. Do you know how fast you were going? I love it when we use the radar gun. So now, as we shoot into the net, the radar gun will tell us how fast the puck is going. 43, 44. We'll each take five slap shots with the three different sticks. 39. 33! I can't stand real bad! Real bad. 29. 32. 26. Contest. 28. 30. Test. Man. <laughs> this is Allison, but. Well, let's remember, Allison has done slap shots a lot more. And I'm the strongest. Be real. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't do as well as I thought I would. They're all like the same, kind of like mine. Let's go figure this out. Okay. When I started out, my parents made me wear bright orange laces so they could spot me on the ice. And now just kind of part of who I am. I started when I was in kindergarten. I started with a chair, and I would skid around and hold the chair and try to skate. It's just fun. When you pass to someone, they score, and you're like all happy. What I really like about hockey is that it's more of a contact physical sport. It's fun when you get down in the corner and fight for the puck. It's kind of like a big battle. Go, 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 sister. We got out the calculator figured out all our averages, and made charts of our results. My accuracy was all over the place. Like on my 65 flex, I had 40%. On my 75 flex, I had 70%. And on my 90 flex, I only had 20%. Yeah, mine were really close together. 65, I had 30%. And 75 and 90, I had 40%. Yeah, for mine, mine was kind of weird. For 65, I had 50%. 
75, I had 30%, and 90, I had 50%. Like you went up in town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the flex is too much, it could really throw your accuracy off. Yeah. It's okay, Tess. I feel your pain. I think all of us, we were too strong for the 65. Yeah, and for the 90, we were, we were a little bit too weak. But I think we all did fine with our 75 flex. Yeah, yeah that would be the one I would pick. Yeah, me 75 too. was like the best. <laughs> Now let's look at our speed. Mine were all the exact same, 29 miles per hour. I think that maybe I just wasn't strong enough to have flex affect the speed. Yeah, on mine, I don't think it will really make a difference with me either. For 65, I had 39 miles per hour, my average, and then 75 was 40 miles per hour, and then 90 was 36 miles per hour. So you would use the 75 then? Yeah. I think that all of us would probably pick 75 flex. Oh, yeah! If you can get the stick to bend, then that whip adds extra energy to get the puck flying. So, a stiffer stick can improve your speed. But only if you're strong enough. Okay, now we know what flex to use. Yeah, but I got a better test. Who shoots more accurately, boys or girls? Duh, what's the test? Follow your knees. No! 